ready. Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. Latest news in the streets. Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Ooh, we got to talk about this situation with uh, Nicki Minaj, Coyla Ray, Bia. Lotto. Woo. I find it very, very funny. Somebody's awfully quiet. All this tea's being spilt on the internet. I ain't heard a peep from Miss Minaj. Keep seeing her barbs everywhere, you know, trying to defend her. So for y'all who don't know what happened, the other day, everybody was minding their business. And now the sudden, bam! 130 tracks from Lotto leaked on the internet. Some Barb, this Barb runs this page. Now the Barb is claiming she's 13. Like I told Malachi, I don't believe shit some of these Barbs say. Um, people be trying to write, you know, their age young, so that way they probably can't get sued. You're like, oh, it's a kid. We know, fuck that. It's a big Barb behind that page. Where is this 13 year old getting all this music to leak? And she's been leaking music for a while. But she claims on her page that she's 13. Anybody writing that they're 13, they're not 13. Because when you're 13, you're trying to be older. 13 year olds like all the time. They're everything but 13. They're 16. They're 19. And the way a lot of y'all kids look nowadays, half y'all 13 year olds look like y'all damn 21. I said, I ain't never seen a 13 year old claim to be 13 voluntarily. Unless they're, you know, in, in science class or something. So the person is writing that they're 13 and they don't leak that all this music. Ooh wee. Music we ain't never heard, music that we've heard and they all came from Lotto's thing. I really can't play the music, but I want y'all to kind of see what I'm talking about here. Let me make sure I have the right. Uh, where's the thing at? Okay, Miss Lotto. Let me read to y'all this real quick. So they done leaked her stuff. All right, there we go. So, Lotta was trending after 130 songs leaked, including Bia and Coyle Ray's demos and, Tor and a Tory Labs, Tory Lane's collab. Um, let me see here. So this is a whole lot of money. Okay. Then uh, this song with her and Tori leaked. Now, what was very interesting is that the demo for Blick Blick leaked, right? And it sounds just like the way Nicki rapped it. Okay. And so what a lot of people were saying, you know, the slow folks, they were saying that basically um, Lotto was writing for all these people. I'm like, this is what y'all got from what we posted. So I had to come online and, you know, basically set the record straight. Like, I, I, I just don't get it. So this is what some people were saying. So I wrote on, on Instagram, I said, I think some of y'all are confused in the comments. Lotto doesn't ghostwrite for anybody. These are reference tracks. Proven that most of these girls in the industry use writers and reference tracks for their songs. This is why there's multiple females rapping the same lyrics on the same song. This doesn't mean that Lotto wrote the lyrics. Capiche? Okay. So that's why I was trying to let people know because people were saying that Lotto wrote the lyrics for Nicki Minaj. This is proof that Nicki doesn't write. Um, then people started getting on Koi Ray because... Nikki and Koi did a live stream and Nikki was asking her, how do you come to your writing process? And it was very odd to watch, but I want y'all to watch this. Um, and, and I'm going to come back with what I, I think. This was just a very weird question, in my personal opinion. Let me pull this up here. 
All right, this is Nikki and Koi. What is your process like? How long How long did it take you to come up with the hook? Did you do the hook first or did you just start rapping at the top of the, of the, ver of the beat and then just went into the hook? Just did the hook first and then the verse. I, I don't know. It okay. Depends. Like when I'm in the studio, like whatever vibe, I'm just a little drink. You know I'm saying? Little vibes. I'll be my people's. I thought what happened to Lotto. All right. Okay. So. Like I was saying, y'all seen Nikki's face. I find it very interesting that that is the question that Nikki chose to ask her. This is somebody that you chose to collaborate with because I guess you saw potential in her, honey. I don't know. But she goes to ask her her writing process. But Nikki is the queen of subtle shade. Y'all let her call her generous queen. Yeah, she's generous, all right. She's generous with the damn shade. If you look at her eyes, the way she's, she's, tr it's almost like she's trying not to laugh. She's making all these weird faces like, y'all know I'm the queen of, you know what I'm saying, facial expressions. Nikki is too. I feel like Nikki was setting all of this up because she's trying to prove that these girls have no pen game, that these girls don't really write. One thing I can say about Nikki is that she's very serious about you know, lyricism and um, being a rapper. And she takes this seriously. I've even seen interviews where she was saying that it's insulting. You would never, you know, go to a box or go to Muhammad Ali or Michael Jordan and, you know, tell them that it's not that big a deal. They don't have to train and anybody can be a boxer. Anybody can be great. No, they train at their craft. And she feels like this is her craft and people need to write. So I found that very interesting. That, that interview was about maybe two, three months ago. So a lot of people have dug that back up. And so now we fast forward and we have the whole Blick Blick situation with, um, with Lotto and Nikki, you know, rapping that same verse. Now, what a lot of people do, um, a lot of writers, a lot of people who work in studios, they'll have different reference tracks and they'll have, you know, different girls rap to them. That is the same situation that happened with Cash Doll and Cardi. I forgot for what song. I remember Cash Doll came out, you know, mad about it. Um, I think it was like a song with Cardi and YG. I might be wrong. And Cash Doll said that she had that song first, but they went with Cardi because she was a bigger artist. So this happens all the time. The same thing when Meg um, got rid of, uh, who's the girl, Asian Doll. Her and Asian Doll were supposed to do a song together. Meg decided to do it with the City Girls. So they do stuff like that all the time. Okay, what's the YG song? See, I be, okay, I be in the, I be in the loop. Chad, I might, you know, mix up certain things and certain names. I might call an album an EP. I might say, you what I call, uh, I meant to say Unk and Few and I was calling it Neff and Few, child. Y'all know what I mean. But, um, so now Coyle Ray is addressing the situation. First, let me show y'all what Lotto had to say about the situation. So this was Lotto. The barbs have just been dragging these girls all the past 48 hours. So this is what Lotto posted. And uh, all she did was basically repost what she wrote back on October 14th. Remember when I did that video about her and Nikki feuding and she caught Nikki, uh, a 40 year old bully, called her the, the grandma of, of you know hip hop. Uh, she says, Nikki was basically saying to her that I have like, you know, your reference tracks and Lotto replies back. She says, I'll post them my goddamn self. They'll all tell you I write too. I heard a few of your reference before they came out too, boo. You forgot we all collab with the same writers. Differences, I don't deny it. The world been seeing me writing since I was 16 on national television. So that is what Lotto posted, at, you know, instead of addressing the fact that 130 songs leaked. Um, and of course, one of the barbs says, we posting you addressing Nicki Minaj when this has nothing to do with her is so weird. You have spoke on your leaks and ref, you could have spoke on your leaks and references without going back to that. Just weird. Child. Anyways, so it's clearly obvious who is behind this leak. Okay. Um, I don't doubt Nikki, Nikki's camp. 
being behind the leak. But I do find it very interesting, okay, that she did go back and reference that and, you know, repost what she was talking about a few months ago when she was battling back and forth with Nikki. But to be fair, people were also saying that Nikki didn't mention Lotto's name, but Lotto got upset when Nikki was referencing the whole Grammy situation. Okay. So now we're going to go ahead and listen to what Koi LeRae and Bia had to say, because Bia was also her reference track for a whole lot of money came out. So let me uh, share with y'all what Bia had to say, and then I'll play y'all the, the Koi LeRae video. So somebody says, I'm so confused. What does all this even mean? Does this mean that Lotto wrote the songs? I don't understand how a lot of y'all think that Lotto wrote like just all this music. It's very strange. I think, and I get it. I guess if you're not in the studio, if you don't work on music, I think a lot of people don't understand what reference tracks are, but I was amazed at how many people thought that Lotto was like just writing all this music. Um, so Bia says, no, London. No, London J wrote the hook. I wrote the pre and the verse. It's not rocket science. Thank you, Bia. Then she goes on to say writing credits. You know you can check those. Stop playing. And then in Whole Lot of Money, it says written by Bianca Landero, London J, Roderick Doss Jr., T. Rom uh, Romano. I don't see anything on here for Mul uh, Lotto. I don't know what her real name is. So these are the people who wrote it. Then she goes on to say, but... NTM on this because I really don't care who writes and who doesn't. I only care about making the best songs that I can make. Okay. And then she also goes on to show more writing credits. So now that is what Bia had to say about the situation. So now I want to show you guys um, what Coy LeRae. Oh gosh, all I see is unicorns. <laughs> <laughs> the unicorns are here. So let me show y'all what Coyle Ray had to say here. So give me just a sec. I'm going to play a bit of her uh, live stream. All right. Let me know if y'all can't hear it. Uh, it's unfortunate that what happened to Lotto, uh, I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy. It's fucked up. It's foolish. There's a lot of hard work um, that a lot of people put into the music. Not only the uh, artists, but the producers. And, you know, for people to just go and really leak something that's precious to someone, it's just corny. Um, but I'm here to speak for myself. And I do want to give a little education real quick. Um... First of all, Heidi, no letting up, add it. Um, and I'm looking at notes, by the way, I have my notes because I had to really make sure I, you know, make sure I have what I want to say very clear. So Heidi, no letting up, add it, did it. Um, no more parties, fucking twin of them, big per involved. I got my whole album. I mean, every single feature written by me. Um, so my, I know my pen game is super amazing. Thank you to all my supporters. Timeless music is not created. Like you can't create it by yourself. I mean, you can, because a lot of people do. But if you look at some of the biggest records in the world, for example, Michael Jackson Thriller, that was written by uh, Rod Temperton. He's a British man, soulful brother. Um, and yeah, it's one of the greatest songs in the world. And again, I am listing icons and I'm educating you guys on something because I feel like this is important and the music industry needs to get a little shift a little bit to understand, you know, music and like real music, timeless music. And you probably all like saying that like, not all of y'all, but y'all probably like, oh, whatever. What do you know? But trust me, I'm super talented. You can fucking see. You can check the charts. You can check my numbers. But I know what I'm talking about. Trust me. You will see. Whitney Houston, I will always love you. 
written by Dolly Parton. Big record, one of the biggest records in the world. Again, icon. Um, the Dream wrote Umbrella, Rihanna, Single Ladies, Beyonce. Um, this does not discredit, oh, and Pooh Bear, another amazing writer, legend. This does not discredit none of these icons and these artists talent, pen game, or what they do. Mariah Carey's online. She's done playing, and she's also another amazing writer. Um, there would be no game without writers. There would be no game without rappers. Now, I mean writers. Now, when it comes to rap, I also understand that as well. But, I mean, you know, I, I'm, I do melodies. I'm melodic. I'm not sitting here trying to rap battle nobody. I'm not going to, you know, you see my double XL freestyle. I'm not the best thinker when it comes to freestyles, but when it comes to me taking my time and writing the song, I'm amazing. So I can admit that I'm not like the best freestyle. Like, you know, I, I feel like. I... All right, girl. girl bye. Um, now, y'all know I like Coyle Ray. I like, you know, twinning them. You know, she got some, you know, fun, you know, bops. Um, I wasn't really into Bleak Bleak, though. Black, Bleak, Bleak Bleak came and went for me. Um, I don't like being gaslit. I, I'm a, I'm gonna keep it real with you. I don't like the gaslighting, Miss Coy Ray. Okay, that's what you're trying to do right now. You're trying to gaslight, and I don't like it. Now let me say this: Who remembers my Static Major documentary, my deep dive I did on Static Major and the the writing industry? Um, I mean that was a very good documentary. If you guys have not watched it, watch it. And I talked about songwriters and songwriters not getting their credit. I talked about how, um, you know, people wrote songs for Beyonce, Rihanna, Michael Jackson. I talked about all of this stuff. The difference, though, Koi, you're trying to compare yourself to singers. OK, you're not educating us on anything new. We've been known that singers have writers. OK, Dolly Parton wrote, I will always love you for Whitney Houston. Um, you know, so many people have written songs for writers. Money Love, uh, Money Love, excuse me, she's another writer who's now singing, you know, songs. Uh, Neo, The Dream, they've all written for people. So you're not teaching us anything new. The difference is you're trying to compare yourself to people who are singers. That is what the songwriting industry for singers in R&B is about. People getting in the room and collaborating with each other, throwing ideas around. And the songwriters are writing songs. Some songwriters can sing, some can't. Some just don't have the look or the physique. So they rather write and then sell their songs to the artist, okay? The difference is you're not a singer, ma'am. You're a rapper, okay? So you're comparing apples to oranges. And like I said, this is no shade, but I just got to keep it real. I, like I, I have no dog in the fight with any of these people. Um, you're trying to compare yourself to singers. You're not a singer. You came into this game as a rapper. Okay. So when you come into a game as a rapper, we expect you to rap. We expect you to write your own music. We expect you to be a writer. Now, I don't doubt that Coyle Ray writes, you know, at least some of her music, right? I think she does write some of her music. Um, I don't think it'd be fair to just say that most female rappers don't write anything. But I think what has happened is this. When rap started, it was about telling a story, <clears throat> be it your story or your homeboy's story or just people in your neighborhood. You were writing that story, just like how Ice Cube was writing all that music for N.W.A. Uh, Daz and Corrupt wrote a lot of stuff for the Dog Pound and, and Snoop and all them. They were all writers. So now we fast forward to 2022 and... I think the problem now is that the word rapper has gotten so watered down. You have a lot of people who are literally factory rappers. You have an industry that's behind them. They write a song. They might be viral for something. And now anybody can be a rapper. Case in point, Bad Baby. The little white girl from Dr. Phil, Cash Me Outside. She literally went on to Dr. Phil and she ended up becoming a rapper so much so that Gucci flip flops ended up on the billboard and she's now considered a rapper. Little Yachty wrote most of her stuff 
And I and so I get the frustration for people like Nikki, Remy Ma, Little Kim, um, you know, Foxy Brown, people who really for you to even be taken seriously, especially as a female, you had to be able to write. You had to be able to write your own raps. And I'm not saying that when you're in the studio, you're not getting help because people bounce ideas off of each other all the time. Right. They might say, no, nah, add this line or, or, you know, add this bar or take this out. So people do that. But the process should be your own. But I think now it's gotten so bastardized that you have reference tracks with four and five different people on these, you know, who have wrapped these same reference tracks. That's because music is and rap is no longer about feeling. It's just been commodified. It's just about a, a hot beat, a hot song. Like Beyonce said years ago, people don't even make full albums anymore. It's just about dropping a quick single, you know, just whatever's hot. And I think that's, you know, it, it's sad. It's sad. But I, I feel bad for Lotto that 130 of her songs leaked. You know what I'm saying? Regardless of the situation, I don't think it was okay to leak her music because that's still music that they were working on and trying to surprise the fans with that now it's not a surprise to anyone or people really going to go out and stream it and buy it. No. So I think it was done on purpose. And I feel like Nikki and her team were definitely behind it because I feel like Nikki is slowly just trying to prove a point that these girls are not writers. They're not on her level. Stop comparing her to these girls. But regardless if she thinks they're on her level or not, I don't think it was okay to leak Lotto's music. I, I don't. I don't agree with that at all. But um, look, somebody going to say Nikki Innocent. Well, I mean, it's just, I don't know. I just find it interesting that she's quiet. Her nemesis is being, you know, embarrassed and Nikki just, she's quiet. No, she's somewhere in the background sipping tea. She, she's, she reminds me of, uh, who's the girl from Mean Girls? Regina George. You know how she like threw all the papers showing all the receipts from the burn book and then just walked off casually into the sunset while the whole school went crazy and was fighting each other. That's Nikki. She just released all these tracks and now the girls are fighting it out and trying, uh-uh, I write my own music. Why write my own music? Oh, it's a reference track. That's literally how that just played out. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, I, I guess for me, I wouldn't be as offended about them, about these reference tracks coming out if these people would stop lying and saying that they write their own music. I think at this point in time, hip hop just needs to be honest. And that goes for everybody, Drake included. Okay. Remember, they found his ghostwriter and the ghostwriter, Quentin Miller, got, Quentin Miller got beat up. I think at this point, rap needs to be honest and say like, hey, I have help. I have writers. I have a guy in the studio, you know, that maybe is not as dope or whatever, or I'm the main face. Because every other genre is honest about it. Country, they're honest about it. R&B, they're honest about it. It's only rap where they keep saying that, oh, I write my own stuff. Well, no, you don't. Most of y'all do not write all of your own music 100%. Maybe back in the day, but nowadays, no. A lot of them are getting help. And I think that that's where, you know, people need to be honest. So that way when reference tracks leak, when things like this happen, nobody's shocked. If this was R&B, nobody would care. Nobody would even care if this was an R&B reference track. But because these girls keep screaming that they're writers and they write and I write and I write. And then a reference track comes out and you guys are all rapping the same exact lyric. Well, obviously you guys didn't write that because everybody doesn't think the same. When you hear a beat, you might envision one thing that goes with the beat versus the person right next to you. But if you guys are all regurgitating the same words verbatim, somebody else wrote them. I don't care if it's the hook. I don't care if it's the verse. I don't care if it's the bridge. It, somebody, you had help. And I think that's where they need to be honest. So, yeah, you, you can't gaslight me into trying to bring up Michael Jackson and Mariah Carey. Ma'am, you're not a singer. You're a rapper. So that the comparison is silly. OK, I just yeah, you know, I'm going to be honest with it. I think at this point in time, 
if these females are going to call themselves rappers, they need to make sure that they are writing their music. And if you're going to get help, then how about we give these songwriters some, some, you know, um, not credit because of course they get credit on the album. But if you watch my documentary that I made, a lot of songwriters, they're, they don't make money like that. They only get money from that credit. But the artist is still able to do tours and travel and, you know what I'm saying, do shows. Songwriters can't do that. And and it gets really shady. They even have some songwriters, you know, sign clauses where they can never admit that they were the songwriter. That's when you have, you know, the ghostwriter situation. So that's my thing. If we're going to use people to help us, then give them that shine. Give them that credit as well. You know what I'm saying? But again, people don't want to do that because if the songwriter is colder than the artist, then why are we listening to the artist? Why are we, why are you my favorite rapper if the person, hello, back here is doing all the work? Well, now I don't want to hear from you. I want to hear from her because these are her experiences and what she's been through. So yeah, it's, it's going to be, you know, interesting to see where rap goes with this. Are we just going to say, well, fine. At this point, writing doesn't matter. Storytelling doesn't matter. Just make a hot track and that's it. That's all. You know, so yeah, th this whole situation shocked a lot. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us, sentiment in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So, sir, your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe.